Good morning YouTube, thanks for tuning back into the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So, right here, we're back down in the shop, working hard away, trying to get some more projects, kind of rolling for you guys to enjoy, and it's kind of hard doing so without an air compressor. So, today, I am going to go pick up an air compressor that I ended up uh, buying it used off of Facebook Marketplace, you know, kind of, you know, make the gamble, but usually I have pretty decent luck on there. Uh, going to pick up an old school 1972-ish model, Dev Air 432, uh, it's a Devil Bis. The Vilbus. I don't know how exactly you pronounce that one yet, but picking that one up down over in Indiana today. So got to go make a little bit of a drive. So I'm going to go pick that one up and hopefully get everything hooked up. Maybe in one day, we're going to see how this project turns out. Stay tuned. so we picked up the compressor and it's sitting right over here but before we get into that one I wanted to bring up two new things for you guys to make sure you go and check out if you haven't already one is that I started a second YouTube channel that's right since we moved here onto this awesome amazing property started up the new YouTube channel Rust Belt Ranch now if you like this kind of content but more of like the homesteading or some of the equipment and maintenance repair kind of stuff for here on the uh, property any kind of lawn care kind of stuff uh, maybe even chainsaws blowing some stuff up getting rid of trees and roots and stumps and stuff all the other kind of stuff that I like to do in my free time make sure you go and check that one out we'll leave the link popping up right here over to Rust Belt Ranch go check that one out and also I've teamed up with Babcox Media to create a new podcast series for the younger technician t2iq is what it's called you guys can go to the link down in the description below it's a great podcast with me and one of their editors we kind of get in talking about some of the automotive world some of the new sense and what it takes to be an automotive technician getting into the world how hard it might be and maybe a couple of tips and tricks on how to start it off right all right let's go jump back into this all right boys and girls here it is finally got back uh, it's about an hour drive to go pick this thing up. It is a little bit older, old school Devilbus. I guess that's how it says Devilbus or whatever it might be. Uh, air compressor. So I'm really excited about this one. Picked it up for a pretty good price, and uh, they they said there was a small issue with it. They said that the um, the regulator switch which turns it on and off at certain pressures is not working correctly is what they said so uh, I guess if that needs replaced then hey I'm I'm all down for it I think we can pick those up for about 50 55 bucks or so uh, hopefully everything else works pretty decent on it they got the front of it cleaned off obviously for taking pictures but uh, we need to clean off the rest of it because the rest of it's uh, kind of nasty looking pretty oily pretty gummy it's been in the shop for better part of 15 years so uh, got to get this all taken care of uh, some of the shieldings a little bit loose on here uh, the belt looks to be actually really new uh, so that's cool that they got that part taken care of so let's get this thing unloaded and then I think I'm gonna get it cleaned off first and foremost Right, next day here I'm kind of going through this as I get time to work in the shop which is 
few and far between, hardly any more between work and doing everything else around the property here, but I'm trying to get there, guys, I promise. So let's do a little bit of an inventory of what's on the compressor and some of the stuff that I picked up that is hopefully going to make this thing run like a purring kitten. So we're going to look and see uh, the regulator, the pressure regulator that was mounted right here. The last owner said that that was bad, and judging by a couple of black spots that were on it, I would say that's probably a good thing. Uh, so I'm going to be replacing that one. Definitely pick that one up. Uh, some of these cables that are on here look pretty original to this compressor, which is like a, a 1960s, 70s model. I believe this was like a 1972 would be my guess on this one. The actual pump is a Dev Air 432, which is supposed to be pretty decently efficient uh, if they're kept up, which... It's not looking like this thing was because when I picked it up, it has no air cleaner on it at all. And judging by the uh, amount of soot and disgust inside of the intake manifold here, I'd say it's not looking too pretty that uh, everything's going to be nice and clean on the inside. So down the road, I'm having a feeling that I'm going to at least need to take the, uh, the air inlet and the check valves, the intake valves and stuff apart on the tops of the heads. To at least go through those, check out the valving, and check out the spring uh, retainers on those, because I bet you they are quite nasty and pretty much junk. All right, so to jump in, I went and I picked up a whole bunch of parts, both for hooking this thing up, servicing it, and doing a little bit of maintenance. My buddies over at Granger uh, here in Dayton, Ohio, they helped me out on this one very nicely. So here is our old unit here, which had a couple of poles in here that were a little dark on the looking side, especially down in this area. Uh, looks like there's been some arcing and some bad contact to it. So I picked up a brand new Square D uh, model of this one. It is gonna be pretty much the same version to this one. Uh, 145 PSI, it's gonna kick on. 175, it's gonna kick off, which is the same pressure rating of what the old one had too. So I wanted to keep it at least to that same standard. So. Pick that one up. Obviously, we got some thread tape here, a bunch of little unions and fittings. We've got a shutoff ball check valve for the side of the tank, as well as a stainless steel braided pipe for making the turn to where our line hookup is on the wall. We got some uh, six foot half inch. Uh, ultra coated the the non-metallic liquid type whip uh, it's got 10-2 cable already ran through the inside of it so that'll be getting me where i need to go i really only need to go about three or four feet to where i'm going to be at the compressor we can kind of see it on the wall right back there it's going to be there compressor is going to be sitting right here where this little basket dumb thing is after I get those few things moved out of the way. So that should work just fine. I looked at getting some 10-2, some conduit with the metal casing and everything, but this for an air conditioner, which is what this is actually made for hooking up air conditioners, um, this was like 15 bucks. And the other stuff for a like 15 foot thing of 10-2 was like $42. That was ridiculous. So 10 gauge, which has already ran through the liquidite. So I had to pick that one up. And then to try to remedy what we have for an air filter, I'm gonna to try to just disassemble the little intake manifold on top, at least take that off and clean that one out. And then I tried looking online, trying to look for parts of this thing, and yeah, that's gonna be few and far between too. So I ended up finding this rigid uh, wet dry vac, you know, smaller filter that's about the same diameter of what I need, a little bit taller. Uh, but I also picked up a quarter 20 threaded bolt here to be able to put that thing on. So hopefully we're going to get some air filtration and that'll take care of some of the noise and the sound and everything on there as well. I know there was some guys online who were saying that they, they matched it up to a John Deere mower filter at one point and put some kind of baffle in between. So we might look into that here down the road, but for right now, this is going to get us going and then obviously picked up some air compressor oil, some mobile Raris 427. Uh, this one in the book, I believe it says it takes 86 ounces of fluid. So I think we got enough 
a little bit over with having three quarts of it in there so we'll get that thing changed out as well as far as draining the oil this is going to be draining our crankcase in here uh, get it all drained out kind of tip it as much as we can to get it all out and then fill her back up after that point might do a little bit more cleaning and such get some of these lines all cleared out and then we'll be scooting her back into place and putting some of the electrical stuff connecting it all up so all right guys let's get to working now that's some nasty stuff not boding really great if this kind of stuff is what's coming out of just that where the intake is supposed to be for the uh, air filter Ugh, nasty all right get some more eggs I've got my presser switch installed here. Got some fresh uh, tape on that one. And now I'm looking at these wires that go from the switch over to uh, the motor unit and the starters. These wires are so old. It's almost like they're braided with a uh, cloth substance on there going to the capacitors for the starter of the uh, motor here so these things are super old the wires in here are super old and frayed on the end so we'll chop those loose and we're going to put some fresh wires in through here and we're going to put everything up to code and put it inside some conduit in here not just have open wires hanging out we're going to make it look all nice and actually like this thing's supposed to work and voila does that not look oh so pretty it's so much more professional looking Keep in mind, don't try this at home. I am a professional Russian. Rather than those old crappy braided whatever crap wires hanging out. So we've got from the pressure switch to the motor all ran. Now we're gonna have to get the wires put in on this section. We've got uh, the middle two poles here go to the motor and the outer two poles will go to the line from the wall. So. We will do a second section after we get the compressor pushed back into place and we're going to get some stuff out of the way against the wall right now uh the old oxygen tank and a couple little crappy things out of the way get that thing pushed back into place and start wiring that in and maybe before that i'll just uh drain the oil and stuff while i'm out here in the open get that one drained and filled and everything too and then once we get everything back there we will start with the actual plumbing hey. Oil is hardly in here at all, so we'll see. Hmm. Well, a chocolate milkshake and you see how much is coming out of the actual hole? That's a whole lot of nothing. Hmm. Wonder if somebody drained it out on purpose or what? Don't know. Things are not looking good, guys. Things are not looking good much at all. Houston, we have a problem. They did not fill me in that they drained any oil out of this. Okay. Yeah, I know. Is it considered stupid if it works? But a little ingenuity. We got a ratchet strap tied to the top of the manifold to kind of tilt this big bad boy over to get every little bit of this old oil that I'm seeing in here kind of flushed out. What I think I want to do is I'm going to uh, take a little bit of uh, 30 weight oil that I've got sitting around, set it back down, um, fill it up part way and then dump it back through to flush what I can again, at least to get all this crap out of it. One hour later. All right, so now we're gonna be moving on to the actual plumbing part, uh, plumbing the tank into the existing black iron pipe that goes through the shop. Luckily enough, the black iron pipe that goes through the shop, it goes to most of the places that I really need and want it to, so uh, this is a pretty nice little place to be able to add everything in. Now, I've gotta see if I can get all this stuff pieced together. I bought a whole bunch of little pieces and parts and stuff from uh, the hardware store definitely needed a shutoff valve for right at the tank and wanted to be able to uh, get this one put in correctly so we can make sure we can shut off our tank and all the lines at night because I don't know if there's any leaks or anything in the rest of the system either. So wanted to get this one put in and hopefully I can uh, get a couple of other pieces to fit together to make it from here to here and also put a little nipple end in 
uh, right here to be able to go out to a line that I want to have in this area also. So I don't know. I got a lot of pipe thread. I got a lot of pipe parts. See if we can make things work. Go. Oh. hooked up from the compressor into our T-fitting. T-fitting goes into there and then I want to have a nice little port out here so I've got a reducer that goes down to a reducer that will have a fitting for airline. So I think it looks pretty legit. Tank on, tank off. Yeah? yeah. Alright. Oh, tell you what, it has been a long day and it's into long night. It's like 10.30 now. And I just got everything finished, wired up, it's all plumbed up and everything. And I'm nervous as all get out about starting this thing out. Now everything doesn't look exactly right. Let's turn it around and have a look under here. And we can see all of our wiring. This one end didn't have a 90, it just had a straight. So uh, eventually I'll get a 90 so it goes straight back and we'll kind of fix that one to the panel. But everything is nice tied up inside the panel on the side so all right everything's plumbed up we've got the valve shut off over here on the end and I think we're about ready to go and throw the breaker we've got both of our lines hooked up on there the ground is a hole hooked up in there as well and everything to the motor so all right guys let's cross our fingers makes a super frustrating end to the day I'm gonna tell you what it kind of sucks um, it's not gonna run I've tried it multiple times uh, I don't think it matters in which the legs go to the motor over into uh, the capacitors but I have a feeling the starter capacitors or whatever uh, I believe those little things in there might be bad because it just kind of buzzes for like two or three seconds and it ends up kicking the breaker so I have a feeling those are bad for the starter on the motor and luckily we've got a really good motor repair place here locally so I think in the morning I'm gonna take this thing either off or see if they can either come over and look at it and tell me whether these little capacitors are gonna be bad or not to, to get this thing started and I don't know hopefully and you know that would be totally my luck you know to have the bad solenoid have the bad pressure regulator um, we would have a leak in the pump the pump probably needs rebuilt and more than likely the electric motor needs rebuilt too and I didn't have any of the hardware here so I had to purchase all of that so 
I know this thing is supposed to be fun and rebuilding old stuff and making old things new, but damn it, it's frustrating sometimes. <laughs> so, all right, I think here in the morning I'll get this motor taken off or I'll give them a call and I don't know, we'll see what's up with it. I'll uh, check back with you here shortly. All right, fast forwarding a day here for everybody. Say hi, Mr. Savage. You in the barn here with us today? Hey, hey, be nice, say hi, say hi. I just want to go run into sticks. Okay, so now we are going to be working in here. I went over to our electric uh, motor supply store because of what I found with this little thing right here. These are the starter caps, the starter capacitors for getting this big old electric. I think it's like a three and a half horse or a four horse um, electric motor started. And as you can see here, how the capacitor is just kind of blown out and blown apart so it is that one was totally junk and the other one didn't look much better so picked up a couple of new ones I think when he tested them out they were like 56 farad uh, capacitors so got those put in got just got them installed and we got our wiring all fitted and finished on here and I think we are ready to go ahead and start this up. Also, while I was there, I picked up a new pressure gauge because I noticed the other pressure gauge had a crack in it and the needle was on the wrong side. So went and picked up another one of those. The other one was like a 300 PSI, but uh, our switch max is out at 175. So 200 one should be just fine for what we're kind of doing here. So. Let's go ahead and get everything kind of uh, closed up on the airline wise and we will start this one up and hopefully it starts and <laughs> starts to build pressure. Fingers crossed, let's do it. All right, here goes nothing. like shut off right about 170 psi so well it looks like our little pop off thing here is got a little bit of a leaky to it that's okay those are super cheap and easy to replace uh, but I guess good news it builds pressure it holds pressure aside from that little thing, but bad news for me, good news for you guys. Looks like we're going to have to do a freaking motor or a pump rebuild on this thing because, boy, it's loud. Um, I'd have to say it probably was run low in oil. They didn't give two shits about it, and uh, those main bearings are probably pretty junk, pretty darn junk, and the rear main seal is just dumping oil out of it. Hopefully the, the uh, crank on it's not bad, but with not being run with oil, life signs are not looking good, guys. Um, hmm. Made this thing that I thought I got a pretty good deal on it. Maybe not have such a great deal. 
Well, now at this point with this pressure, while I'm here, might as well open the tank up, open the lines up, and check and see if I've got any leaks elsewhere in the shop. No leaks there. All right, we've got, the line actually runs all along the top of this shop here. I'm not hearing anything down through here. And then it goes through the wall right there over to this other side where we have another drop off right here. And I'm not hearing any leaks here either. Looks like there's a port up here and there's the port right there as well. So, all right no leaks up to that point that's a plus at least we got some kind of good news from that well well shoot now time to rebrainstorm this whole air compressor thing and not buying a new one well guys you win some and you lose some and today looks like we lost our ass hard and Turns out this, um, you know, $400 air compressor that I picked up, $500 air compressor that I picked up, the guy ended up refunding me 100 bucks because he felt bad for it. But, you know, at the same time, all kind of sucks. So, ends up the pump itself is pretty much um, probably done for. The way it sounds and how rough it is. Uh, sounds like a big old box of garbled up rocks and just bad, but the electric motor is good and going fine. The tank is just fine. Just that pump just is done for. So in looking at it, uh, trying to look something up, you're like, oh, maybe I can find a replacement for it. Well, uh, Canadian slash, you know, American-ish build pump from the 1970s, um, they don't exist anymore. There are rebuild kits available for it, but also in talking with a couple of experts on it, they said if that back seal is blown out, more than likely the crank was walking and the crank uh, ba main bearings are probably shot. And by the time you're going to get parts and stuff in a crank, it's pretty much not worth doing the rebuild. So I don't know yet whether I'm going to tear it apart and see if it's definitely the crank or not. I don't know, not quite sure if I want to go that far into it or just try to find some kind of a pump to just replace the pump. What would you guys like to see? Let's hear that one. Down in the comments below, let's do a little voting and just with comments and see, would you guys like to see me just tear this one apart, see what's wrong with it, maybe in the smallest chance, which not my luck, might be able to do some kind of a rebuild. Rebuild kits on these are about 400, 500 bucks, right around there. Four to five hundred dollars for a Dev Air 432. Uh, maybe we would get lucky, but uh, then again, looking at whole brand new pumps, they're about fourteen hundred to two thousand dollars for ones that have the capacity that this one does. So I don't know. Let's hear what you guys have to say about it. Let's see if you guys want to see this one torn apart or if you want me to just do a replacement on it, get this project done, and get on to the next one. Leave those down below. On that ending note, that's about all I've got for you guys today. Make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification. Just like that, that ding. So you get notified when I come out with new awesome content just like this one here today. And if you didn't know, like I said earlier on, make sure you go and check out Rust Belt Ranch where I do a lot more projects like this that aren't so automotive or shop related and go through some of the equipment that I've got going on here. I guess this video kind of could have gone on that channel, but eh, it's all good. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. You guys stay awesome.